Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Blake Builders. Today, we are on episode number four, and I'm very, very, very excited to have Dwayne Barney on, on uh, Zoom here with us. Dwayne is located all the way out in, is it Connecticut? Yeah, I'm in Connecticut. Yep. Out in Connecticut. So Dwayne is the, he's a construction business consultant at Business Blueprint Incorporated. Um, he's a, uh, also what I would call a professional construction coach or I'm sure you do a lot more. So Dwayne, uh, <laughs> why don't you introduce yourself a little bit and tell us what you do and how you help people in this crazy world of construction. Well, Blake, thank you for having me today. It's, uh, it's always great to speak to you and to your audience. Uh, I like to get the word out as much as I can. Uh, I have been in construction literally my entire career. Uh, I have a degree in this from the University of Florida. i uh, worked commercial work and eventually ended up in the residential sector and have been doing residential construction since 1990-ish. Wow. So I've got a few years under my belt. Uh, I've got multiple businesses under my belt, and I've worked for multiple corporations along the way. Um, a lot of it on the, in the high-end estate uh, home sector, mm -hmm. which was a lot of fun. And uh, so it, what it's done for me is I've seen the way – Commercial contractors work. I seen the struggles I've had as a personal running, running and building my own business. Mm -hmm. And I've worked with some really good builders and seen how they operate. So I try to bring all of that to the table when I'm talking to, you know, my groups, my, my uh, coaching groups, or when I'm doing posts on LinkedIn, I just kind of try to gather all that information together to try to help all the builders out there who I know are great builders and a lot of times struggle with the business side of their business. And then that's where my focus is. Yeah, that's definitely a challenge for, I mean, for me every day. And I see it all the time. People who are really good at uh, being the technical, you know, nail the hammer, but don't know how to run the, run the business. Uh, my favorite. Right, book yeah. Really and I, I say that in my coaching calls all the time. It's like, I, I'm not going to talk to you anything about construction. I know the terminology. I know all of that. You don't need any help from me yeah. on how to be yeah. a great builder. You've got that down. Let's yeah, talk most, about business. My favorite book that I read that kind of got me excited about business and helping delegate was the E-Myth. That was one of my e -Myth. top. Yeah. 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 E -Myth, e myth is a good book. I really, it was one of the first books I read uh, when I started my business and I really got a lot out of it. And unfortunately for me, it, it when I finished it, I, I was kind of stuck hanging. I felt like, okay, I get it, work in the business, work mm -hmm. on the business, but what do I do now? What's the next, yeah, exactly. What's the next step? And I feel like what I'm trying to bring to the table is that next step. Okay, what, is, what does really working on your business mean? How do I separate these two, both in my mind and in my mm -hmm. life? Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, going back to how Dwayne and I met, we've actually only met virtually uh, through LinkedIn. <laughs> LinkedIn's obviously... A platform that um, a lot of business business oriented um, individuals are on, and I feel like for me, when we post to Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn, the organic reach is just unbelievable on LinkedIn. Um, still at this point, I don't know if it's going to be in the next two to five years, but right now, I feel like the reach that we get from videos or um, you know uh, photos, it just it reaches so much more. Um, on LinkedIn. So Dwayne and I have connected through there. We, I'm on Zoom calls with him every couple of weeks. He does some different, uh, you know, business. I don't know what you want to call those, Dwayne. Uh, I just, I just call them coffee and construction group. Yep. I, I like to describe it. I mean, I, I, I post it on there. It's like, okay, a bunch of us just get to get together over a cup of coffee and talk about business. Yeah. Yeah. And that's wonderful. It's so great to be able to uh, toss ideas back and forth with people across the whole United States and you know, talk, whether it's your fee or how you manage subcontractors or what. So Dwayne's been really good at that. Um, so Dwayne, tell me a little bit about your um, kind of what value you feel like you bring to clients, what makes you different or why someone like Blake Builders or anybody would need someone like you? Well, I work with um, many, I guess I say different levels, levels is the wrong word, but different stages of business. Um, I've got clients that have been in business for 15, 20 years and are still struggling with the 70 hour work week. Uh, and I also work with young guys who are coming in, you know, they're just like, I'm just getting going in this whole construction thing. And I'm realizing 
I don't know anything about the business side. I mean, I, I kind of get it. Yeah, I've got to do payroll. I got to pay some bills, but it all seems to be chaos around me. I, I really don't know which piece to grab. Mm -hmm. So I work with different, you know, different businesses at different stages in their, in their career. And like I said earlier, I try to bring one, I, I, I try to stick to the construction sector, mm -hmm. primarily residential, um, and then again, remodeling, right. and narrow it down, because I feel like these are very, very talented builders. Uh, if you can figure out how to remodel a house, take the thing apart, put it back together, especially while the client's living there, you know, that, that's got challenges way beyond, you know, oh, yeah. the spec builder guys out there or the track builders who are throwing up townhouses left and right. Right. It's a unique skill set. Mm -hmm. So it's got a, it's got a unique talent. These are very, very good builders. Uh, and to try to translate those skills into running a business is where I really want to help everyone. Yeah. And just learning how to scale and, and delegate, you know, learning the biggest thing, you know, just from your posts and your videos and chatting is, you know, when I get a task, is it something that I can delegate to my team or something that I need to be doing physically? So that's definitely, right. Right. Um, yeah. There, there are, there are certain roles that only the owner can do and you yeah. need to glean those out of the picture. Like, can somebody else do this for me? Right. Um, right. But they're in, but there are roles, you know, um, we're doing the seminar right now on um, um, cash flow. Well, really the owner owner is the only one in the business is really going to watch those cash flow I items and make those decisions. Mm -hmm. No one's going to make those for them. And it's, you know, it's a boring topic. Most of the back office stuff in business is boring, mm -hmm. but it's the important stuff that we do. And that's what we signed up for. Right. Yeah, that's you, exactly. Um, so COVID's, we feel like kind of reached its peak and hopefully going down, knock on wood. Um, how has COVID really affected you or has it really affected you and your business? Well, it was, um, it, it did have some impact. I really dove hard into the consulting world uh, trying to get it up to a full-time career just as COVID started. Um, surprisingly, I expected residential remodeling. When I saw COVID come in, I expected residential remodeling to crash. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't see the boom it was about to be come. It was, I was like, really, look what just happened. And, and you know, and I, I started to put my shingle aside and start working on consulting. But the downside of that was part of my, um, my business strategy at that point was public speaking. Mm. And of course, all public speaking vanished. Yep. <laughs> so I, I, I got better. I got better at these formats. I got better yeah. at Zoom. I got better at virtual presentations. Um, and I have had the opportunity to do, uh, you know, some good public speaking. I've, I've been speaking at JLC Live. Uh, I've got another one coming up here at the end of the month. I got three presentations. So the public speaking has probably been the biggest impact where you know, I really wanted to get out there and speak to groups because these are the people that are really interested in proving their business. People that are willing to go to a business seminar, you know, at a convention, they're like, you know, I want to learn more. And then I couldn't reach out to them. So that, yeah. that, that was a little bit disappointing on that end. And it's, it's fun to have that stuff coming back. Well, you've done, you've done a wonderful job on your, on your platforms, LinkedIn, Zoom, all that stuff. You've done a wonderful job. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I've, I've, for good or for bad, I've had to focus there. So yeah. Well, that kind of <laughs> leads COVID, me to COVID kind of drove me there. I was like, okay, I can't go do presentations. You know, we're just gonna live here on LinkedIn. Right. And uh, to your point, I mean, I stayed on LinkedIn. I don't, I don't do anything on Facebook or Instagram or any of those. I stayed here because I am looking to network with builders mm -hmm. with a business mindset. Right. Yeah. You know, so I figured, okay, what Facebook is going to probably give me a lot of guys with a ladder and a pickup truck. Yep. They're, they don't want to hear what I've got to say, and they're not the folks I want to work with. So that, so LinkedIn has been my primary focus on the social media. Yeah, and it sounds like I saw something on the news, I don't know, or on the Facebook somewhere that the Facebook has finally kind of reached its peak of, of users. So which the newer generation, um, you know, the high school kids, college Sounds like they're not really on Facebook, or if they are, they don't ever do anything on it. So it's time to... <laughs> Like even, even my potential clients or future clients, they probably won't have Facebook. Um, they're going to be on the other platforms like the TikTok and whatever else. But um, as far as the commercial clients, the architects, the engineers, they're on LinkedIn. Right, that's, right, that's right. At. And that, that's where I've spent my time. And that's really, you know, COVID has driven me there from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it, you know, it's taught me a lot because I've, I've, I live on Zoom calls. 
Yeah. I'll, and, you know, this form of communication and I've learned how to do video and I'm doing, you know, I'm trying to do more and more video mm -hmm. just to try to connect with people. And I think the video is really important. Just it makes a more of a personal connection. You know, you right. can see people's, you know, reactions. You can see their eyes. You can see how they're feeling even more than you can hear it in their voice. So I, I, I really enjoy the video part of it and I'm getting better at it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's all about just kind of feeling comfortable and learning to see yourself on the screen. <laughs> it's a it, it's a challenge it, start starting out. Um, so, where as far as your business plan for the next you know couple of years, five years, how do you do you see yourself growing, or do you see yourself really visioning and focusing in on one type of client, or how do you what where's your future looking? Well, I think my future is really focused again. I'm gonna stay. I'm going to stay narrow on the remodeling industry. I mm -hmm. think remodeling as an industry has got huge potential. Mm -hmm. um, as, as the baby boomers retire and, you know, unfortunately die, mm -hmm. there is a lot of really good housing that is going to come on the market in desirable neighborhoods, yeah. areas where people really want to live. It's just not the house they want to live in. Right. And these houses are going to need a lot of repair. They want the open concept. They, they want to move all these load bearing walls out of the way. Right, right, right. So good remodelers are going to be in high demand. And I really see the industry is in a lot of ways replacing our manufacturing sector, mm. you know, where people aren't going, you know, to the factory anymore to get for their job, that this is, this is one of those major sectors that's going to take over in the United States. And it's mm -hmm. going to need good, strong business players to run these businesses yeah and that's one of the reasons i'm really involved in remodeling one i know it but i also believe in it i believe this is this is going to be a strong sector and it's going to need good business people to run these operations and yeah. you know unfortunately it, it is a struggle for for a lot of folks they come up through the trades and no one teaches us anything about business how to run a business mm -hmm. how to do sales and marketing how to tie it all together and make it all work without a 70 hour work week. Yeah. So I think it's a, I think it's a strong sector and I think, you know, we're going to hit a downturn, you yeah. know, it's, it's, it's going to come. Absolutely. It's going to weed a lot of people out. Mm -hmm. And the guys that are prepared, have their businesses structured strongly are the guys that are going to survive. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Dwayne, I, again, I keep these videos and conversations very short and sweet. I don't like to do hour long or even <laughs> close to half hour just because, uh, people don't uh, pay attention that long sometimes. Um, yep. so we're going to kind of wrap this up here. If, uh, if we have a remodeler or a builder around here in Lincoln, Nebraska, or anywhere that's listening here around the United States, um, or maybe world, <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, well, yeah, I've, I've got connections in, in Australia and, and quite a few in Canada. Yeah. So, um, what is the best way for them to reach you and, uh, and, and be in touch with you about what you do? Well, to, to learn more about me, the best way to find out about what I do and what I think and how I approach business is to check me out on LinkedIn, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, everything about me is up there. So if you, if you want to learn more and you're like, I don't know much about this guy go on to LinkedIn, check out my profile. You'll know everything you want to know about me. Uh, to reach me, uh, my email is Dwayne at, at businessblueprintinc.com. And I'll also put that below um, okay. the video and the, on the podcast. So, you know, I'm, I'm available there. If you're on LinkedIn, I respond to the DMs as quickly as I can. So if anybody just wants to reach out, they can reach out to me there as well. Perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for coming on here and sharing a little bit about what you do. I know there's a lot of people in the industry, as we are already discussing, that do not even know that someone like you exists. <laughs> and um, they really, a lot of people do need your advice and help. So I appreciate you for taking the time to hop on here today. Oh, thank you. I appreciate the outreach. All right. Thank you so much, Dwayne. Yep. Bye.